So how's everybody doing? So this is the lost wall video. And the reason why I'm calling it that is because I produced a video on how to build this retaining wall uh, out of like very simple, really out of evergreen plastic. You could build it out of wood too, or, you know, even foam core if you really wanted to. Um, but the reason why I like to build out of plastic is just because of the compatibility with other products like acrylic pastes and stuff, and it stays rigid and lasts indefinitely, right? But what happened was, is I, uh, just let me move the camera a little bit more. So uh, what happened was, is I produced the video, but I lost, you know, three video clips on the actual tape and texture. These kind of things happen, you know, when you're in production, uh, even though I'm really meticulous with, you know, the the cans of film that I produce and, and the way I organize. Somehow it fell through the cracks, but I just found them. So what I want to do is just show you, because people had requested, oh, well, how did you do the little lines, like the little four by eight sort of um, cosmetic, you know, lines, because that's what they would have been probably, right? Or just form boards from four by eight sheets of plywood. But you can do this in any size, really. So what I'm going to do is just show you how I did that. It's a fairly simple procedure, but I'll, I'll include it here in this sort of amended video for you so that uh, people can uh, use the technique or, or you know, be inspired or whatever to uh, try it on other types of surfaces or walls, retaining walls, buildings, you know, whatever. Even cinder block buildings you can do this with too, right? Okay. Okay, so I just want to show you, I just did a 4x8 pattern with tape, just to suggest, you know, form boards. And I just used some 2 mil automotive tape. You can get this at Lord Co's or any automotive place. It's thin line tape, it's called. Or some call it trim line, depends how it's packaged. But you just it's a thin 2 mil automotive tape for doing paint work. So it's cheaper than buying the hobby equivalent. And it's stretchy, it's really good quality. So I just ran, just a suggestion, even though these lines would probably be four to six inches or two mil in HO, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to skim this now with another coat of probably coarse or pumice, you know, whatever, I'll decide that. But I'm going to paint it over again, and then I'm just going to pick and peel the tape off. Uh, not right away, though. I'm going to let it dry a bit, and then so it leaves kind of, you know, a rough pull because uh, that's what I want. So it just gives a suggestion. So when you put washes on it and, and it indicates, you know, the form boards, you know, okay. I'm going to use this fine pumice gel because I don't want to build up too much of an aggressive texture for HO scale. And this will soften it a bit. The the first one that's there that seems a little bit aggressive 
Um, it, this will soften it a bit, but it'll but it'll dry to a, a uh, matte, sandy texture, and uh, so it'll just you know help smooth out some of the uh, initial texture, and then leave a, a more subtle indication of lines when I pull the tape. I find this works really good when you just keep the the uh, you know, brush sort of wet with a damp rag and just wipe it. A bit of water, like all the critics acrylics love, a little bit of a a wet brush. And this particular product, all these gels are very forgiving. And like I say, you learn to feel the paint because it is paint in a way. Just call it paint for the purposes of the video, but. Um, I find when you introduce a little bit of water it seems to smooth out nice and spread better. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll peel the tape. Okay, so this is set up for a couple hours now, this fine pumice gel over the tape. So I'm just going to pull this tape off. And uh, it'll leave enough of an indication that when I base paint this out and then put a dirty wash on it or whatever, I'll probably use Vallejos. I really love doing concrete surfaces with Vallejo paint. It's easy. They got, got it spelled out pretty easy for you. I mean, you can do mix your own if you want. See, that came off really good, didn't it? Pull that last one off. And uh, you can sort of, let me just turn this light off for a sec. You can sort of see, see the mark, the mark there, the texture change. See that? So that'll be kind of cool. And we'll let that dry. I'll put that aside, work on something else. And then have a look at it. And if it's too severe, this you can put another coat of watered down fine pumice again over top. All right, layers, you know, don't be afraid to put thin layers over things to change up the the desired quality or effect of something. There, that looks pretty good, eh? And uh, that'll just give just a hint of uh, you know form boards and along with stains and maybe some graffiti and bush hanging over top and everything it should look pretty good i think okay.